Ukraine's interior minister says 63 bodies of civilians with signs of torture have been found in areas of the Kherson region, recaptured from the Russians after eight months of occupation. Residents who fled also reported killings and other abuses. Meanwhile, President Volodymyr Zelensky is adamant that the missile strike that killed two people in Poland on Tuesday was not caused by Ukrainian air defence. NATO and the US say they now believe that to have been the case, but Mr Zelensky said he had no reason to question his commander's reports to the contrary. Let's go to Ukraine and talk to our correspondent, James Waterhouse, who's in Mykolaiv. James, you've been into Kherson. What did you find and what have people been telling you? Well, it's unlike any other liberated areas that we've been to, really. When you move into the city, you make your way through what were the front lines. And it's a good hour drive between the old Ukrainian positions and the Russian defensive trenches as you move into Kherson. Unlike other uh, cities that have been liberated, Kherson remains sort of structurally intact. There was some incoming artillery, but people there uh, all have some kind of experience in relation to Russian occupation. And what the authorities are saying, what investigators are saying, is that they have found several uh, what they describe as illegal prisons and torture chambers, which they say were used by the Russians uh, on people who had protested against their occupation or people who had connections to the Ukrainian military. Whenever Russia loosens its grip on parts of Ukrainian territory, we start to get an idea of their footprint, what life is like. Not before. These places go dark. It's very difficult to verify what happens when the Russians control areas. But what we are told and what we have seen, uh, we were at a, a police station, which they say were used as torture chambers. We saw evidence that people have been kept there for some time. We've spoken to people who describe psychological torture, seeing uh, mostly men beaten and tortured and forced to confess to being um, Ukrainian collaborators. So these stories are starting to emerge. Moscow's long denied uh, strongly denied committing war crimes, but the evidence suggesting otherwise continues to mount. And James, what sort of pattern does this seem to be? How does what you've seen and heard about in Kherson compare to what's happened in other places when Russian forces have pulled back, for example, when they left the outskirts of Kyiv earlier in the year? Well, if we take the, the, the Kyiv region, as you say, these are cities and towns that found themselves at the heart of the fighting. So when the Russians advanced in, they were met with Ukrainian defence in these areas. So what invading forces tried to do was both consolidate, but also they tried to, you know, these places were destroyed by Ukrainian and Russian shells through fighting. And we saw evidence that civilians had been deliberately targeted. Uh, and murdered by the Russians. And these are communities, whole cities, which have effectively been flattened and they will take years to recover from. It, it's very hard to visually comprehend um, the damage that you see in these places. Hassan feels like it was a bigger attempt by Russia to try and legitimize its presence. You still had Russian banners on the sides of roads saying, Hassan is Russia. Uh, there were adverts for Russian passports listing the benefits you would receive if you received one. Instead now, there are Ukrainian police officers and, and soldiers checking people's identification. If someone has a Russian passport, we saw a man yesterday who pretended to be Ukrainian. He had a Russian passport. He was detained very quickly. So the tide has changed and you know, people do have moving testimonies, but it seems in her song because it was the re only regional capital to fall, this is somewhere Russia really tried to absorb and make appear uh, as its own territory. So there are some subtle differences here, but there are, you know, it is a happier place, certainly, now that it is back in Ukrainian control. James, thank you. James Waterhouse in southern Ukraine.